the RFP. So please feel free. Um, please feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, Diana will be monitoring the chat and let me know um, if there are any any questions that arise as we're going. So um, please feel free to to ask questions as we go. Um, so again, I'm just excited to announce the Idaho Community Programs for Youth Award opportunity um, through a little bit um, regarding the intent of this award. Um, you are not speaking, please do mute your call because this is being recorded for others to view in the future. Thank you. Um, so the intent of this award and the intent of the dollars coming to the network were to address learning loss and recovery or unfinished learning as we're terming it, um, providing academic support and that can look a lot of different ways um, and also social emotional support. So when we speak about social emotional support, we know that encompasses a lot of things that can be you know, developing healthy mentorships or getting exercise and just letting ourselves, you know, really heal during this time in many ways um, through connection and mentorship. And that is out of school time in so many ways. So uh, we know that can look different for different programs and um, there's definitely creative and articulate that. Um, and then serving every child. So the accessibility and, and that these, these programs are accessible to all youth is a huge focus of this award um, that we, can provide services to all youth and that no one is, um, no one's held out from getting access to out of school time programming. What we know from the intent language and the code of federal regulations behind the award is that they're seeking evidence-based and proven effective programming. Again, this is open to a lot of interpretation. Um, the network has a lot of resources that point towards evidence-based practices or best practices. Um, and we're definitely available to answer any questions if you have questions about whether or not what you're proposing in your proposal um, is particularly evidence-based. Um, there's a lot of research that is really open to interpretation. I mean, as we see a deep reach in underserved communities, strong connections with kids and families. Um, so it, it's again, a broad definition. Um, I just wanna confirm, are you seeing my slides? Okay, all right, thanks. It doesn't have the nice uh, square around it that it usually does, so. <laughs> So who can apply? Um, I put arts programs, clubs, after and before school programs and camps. Um, again, this is pretty open. That's the exciting part about this award is that um, if there's a need and these areas are proven that you're serving in the areas um, included in the intent, um, I think we can make a case you know, for, for the nature of, of programming. Uh, why should we apply for this award? I know there's a lot of different awards out there right now and grants with CARES Act dollars. Um, we're really striving to build a community of out of school time professionals and the network is here to support and lift up programs. Um, everyone will receive additional support from staff and you know we have the building blocks for out of school time quality. Um, so we really focus on the family, inclusiveness, program design, um, and when we're here to help um, build the stories for support ongoing into the future for out of school time programming, not just this one time um, opportunity, but really taking this as, as our time to capture what we're doing and tell our story on a larger scale. This is important all the time, not just in this time of um, recovery and you know healing from the pandemic, but, but in all times after school, is critical to support our youth in our communities. So we're really looking at this as an opportunity to build our stories and to capture the impact of the work that we're doing. So as part of our grant or our award, um, we will be really trying to work to, to capture your stories and be able to show the impact to our policymakers and our communities. So being part of our award will allow for that, um, that opportunity as well for your program. Are there any questions at this time? Are we doing okay? I know we're only five minutes in. <laughs> okay. Um, eligibility, and I took this pretty much from the RFP, but um, 
this grant is from the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare. So it is under the Child Care Development Block Grant um, parameters. So serving youth between the ages of five and 13, that does not mean that you're not also serving youth younger or youth older, but for these, this grant purpose, that's the age that we'll focus on for this grant award. Um, so you do need to be serving in addition to the younger or the older kiddos, this age group of five to 13 as well for funding um, with, this, with this award. Um, operating between the time frame of August 1st and July 31st, 2021. Um, I do want to note that you're not required to submit a budget for that full time period. There will be an opportunity this winter to apply for um, winter and spring semester um, funding as well, as well as an as a summer of innovation grant. Um, so we do expect that for some, this might be a full year grant. And so the reporting would be after that July 3rd, 31st deadline. For others, you might count on this for um, this fall, this fall programming. Um, this is all contingent on funding coming in addition to us um, from this award that we're receiving. Um, we do have, you know, like 99% sure they're going to continue to fund us. Um, but as it is, it is coming in um, in quarters. So we do have this um, this fall award as well as then the winter and spring award, and then the summer of Inno innovation award. Um, does that? I know that's probably confusing. <laughs> I'm trying to articulate it. Does it? Does it? resonate? Are there any questions there with regard to the funding cycle and the, the potential timeline or use of the funds? Anna, would um, funding be able to be carried over past that J July 31st deadline? So if, if we were able to utilize the full award amount, would we be able to carry that over? I believe so. In our award, it has to be used by 2023. Okay. Um, but if you are intending to apply for that next phase, I would want to see the full amount utilized in order okay. to apply for that next phase. Okay. Um, so another eligibility requirement is that we're serving underserved or unserved populations in out of school time. And we are using the um, ALICE da data from the United Way, the Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. Um, so there's a lot of information about that on the United Way website. Um, they, they report, they um, publish an ALICE report annually. And so we will be considering um, those definitions in our, in our review. We have some additional requirements and this would need to be budgeted in your full budget submission to us. Um, program managers or a designee would attend a new grantee training on September 9th um, at the Riverside Hotel in Boise. And as well, we want to encourage and um, have attendees be present for the Power Up Summit. It's a very exciting annual conference. It's the only conference dedicated solely to out of school time providers. So it's really a great way to network with other providers and um, to meet some of our partners and supporters in the field. So we're really excited about that. Um, and we will then have in the fall a one day team training, either the end of October or beginning of November um, on the Idaho building blocks for out of school time quality, and then as well, a, a, a afternoon portion on social emotional learning. And we would encourage this also to be in person. It's just kind of a great team building experience. Um, we understand that's, that's a commitment to have two full um, periods of travel in a short period of time. So we would um, definitely consider a hybrid um, model for that as well. Um, yes, Wendy, the budget would need to incl include the travel and accommodations for the training. Um, so some of the details, additional details on this award. Um, we are excited about the opportunity to communicate with programs. And um, this is something that we do well as a network and that we feel um, is, is a value added um, piece of our program model. 
Um, and we have the Idaho Building Blocks for Out of School Time Quality, which Diana McAllister is on the call and she's the expert in this, um, in this modality that we offer. <laughs> and um, so we'll be working closely to do some self-assessment on those building blocks for out of school time quality. Um, it is not a, a, a punitive system. It's very much like a strengths-based um, process that we go through together. And um, we're excited to be offering that. Um, all financials related to the CARES Act, um, whether you're applying for funds through the, your Idaho Commission of Libraries or your local education associations, all funds through the CARES Act are subject to audits. Um, so we just like to put that up front. Um, and so when submitting the budget narrative, if you are um, seeing that you're gonna go more than 10% out of a category area, I would just wanna have a conversation about that. Um, there won't be issues per se, but it's just something to be in communication about its best practice with regard to following um, these budgets and making sure that our reporting is clear. Um, our MLU will outline some specific reporting requirements for financials, um, but it will be high level and based on your budget that's submitted. There won't be any surprises there. Um, we want to make this a very, um, very easy to do not, you know, labor intensive, but we also know that as that other point states, we are subject to, um, to audits. So we want to just be very transparent there. Um, there is a 10% maximum on administrative or overhead costs allowed. And um, for financial reports, we would have those due 15 days after the end of the grant. So if you are budgeting just through December, then we would have a January 15th deadline for that, that report. Um, if you're going all the way through, and, and as um, Deanne mentioned, if you do need an extension or carryover of those funds, um, that would be allowable as well. We would just want to discuss what that looks like. So that's uh, kind of the, the, the majority of what I wanted to communicate about our RFP. And I'd love to take any, any questions now with regard to if you've looked over the RFP or if you've even begun the application, if you have additional um, areas for clarification. Um, this is an opportunity um, to ask any questions. And if I don't know the answers, I can look them up, <laughs> get back to people. So I have one quick question um, on the data collection. Is that going to be similar to what the 21st century CCLC requires from us? Uh, we are potentially working with um, with the university source for evaluation. And it would be the same as the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare's um, reporting requirements. But yes, demographics, numbers of individuals served, um, how, many, how many sessions they attended would also be. If you had any family nights, things like that. Others, community members engaged, but basic, yes, basic um, numbers of those served. Okay. I see girls on the run. <laughs> Anna, um, my name's Tony, and this this would be the first uh, government grant that we applied for. So I looked over the RFP and um, I was questioning the program site name and data. We're a distributed program that is implemented across um, sites in six Southwest Idaho counties. So should I put our office for that or how I would, would I reflect that? Yes, if you could put your office and then if there is room for an other, Emily who helped create this document is online. Emily, if you could speak to where we might put the, the outreaching site site names because that would be important as well to know that there's that rule or um, multiple site but as far as your contact yes the primary site okay i don't know if emily wants to speak to where that other information might go um i can add a section at the end if there's not another thing that just says and do you have any additional information and then you can add it there okay does that work tony it does. I have one, one more question that I'll sneak in okay. on the, bu the budget section. Um, 
it indicated that there should be a number of categories, personnel, benefits, supplies, scholarships, other. So if our budget that we typically write and operate off of doesn't neatly fit into that, um, I should massage it into those categories before I submit, correct? That would be ideal. If there are categories that just really don't apply, you can put NA. Okay. Um, but just, to, yeah, I would say identifying that those are not categories that apply to you would be helpful to our reviewers, just for consistency. Thank you. Any additional questions? Okay, I do want to go through some of the other American Rescue Plan Act resources. Um, there are funds available still through the State Education Agency. I have um, yet to completely understand how those will be accessible to after school and summer learning and continuing to track that. Um, they did submit a plan and we have not heard the final um, action steps on that, but that will be close to $8 million that is um, staying with the state for after school and summer learning. And, and if you do sign up for the Idaho Out of School Network um, newsletter, um, you will get the most um, updated information on that. And we're hoping by um, even our next newsletter, we may have some additional information on that. Um, the local education associations do have grants or awards um, and they get kind of their own discretion on how they are applying those awards. But if there is someone on this call or someone in your community that you know who's seeking um, funds and maybe um, doesn't feel they fit in this category for grants that we're talking about today, um, I could help connect you with that local education association um, official and you could discuss more what that could look like for your program. Um, Municipalities have also been dedicated funds from the CARES Act. Um, the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare, the, the award that, that we received through the network also has its own granting system available right now. And there are $20,000 grants for individual programs, um, $250,000 awards for um, regional programs and $500,000 awards for statewide programs. Um, those are still open and will be available September 1st again. Um, libraries have had their own granting programs as well through the Idaho Commission of Libraries and Stephanie Bailey White is the contact there to inquire about those, those awards. Um, I know that they did close June 15th, but I'm not aware if they had additional funds or will be doing a second cycle on those grants. Um, the Boys and Girls Clubs and YMCA um, in Idaho, I know that the six Boys and Girls Club sites did apply for the larger grants and are um, supplying those awards to their um, regional sites. Um, and YMCA as well has received these, these funds for their program sites. Um, this is the Idaho Department of Health and Welfare, Idaho Community Programs Grant. Um, site and their funding cycles are September 1st, January 1st, and April 1st. So I did just want to note that, that there are these additional funds out there. Uh, we are cross-checking so that if someone is applying for my, our awards through the Idaho Out of School Network, um, likely won't be eligible for, for these, these awards, um, unless it's for a different site. And I know that went kind of fast, but I do, I do, I am here to answer any questions or clarifications on the RFP or the application process or reporting requirements. Hey Anna, it's Hillary. Yes, hi Hillary. Um, hi. So you said there's a 10% cap on administration. Does that mean at the your subgrantee level? 
Yes. So sub grantees have a 10%, um, whether it's like your fiscal agent or your overhead organization. Okay. But that doesn't include like the director personnel. No, no. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks for okay. clarifying that. Not, not, yeah, the, I, was, not I was pretty sure, <laughs> but um, okay. Thank More, you. Like, if your district, you know, charges you 10% on programming yeah. in your school, um, it's capped it's like your indirect rate. Okay. Indirect. Okay. Correct. Yes. Thank you. Direct overhead. We were just so clear <laughs> in our RFP. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm also available if um, you are working with the school district and they're considering leveraging funds um, and this is a good fit for you. Um, I definitely could be available to answer any questions to an administrator um, or school district that you're working with if you're within a school. All right, well, if there aren't any additional questions, um, please feel free to to give me a call if something comes up. Um, but otherwise, let's see, there might be one more question here. Oh, thank you, Hillary. <laughs> so great. All right. Well, we're excited and look forward to seeing your applications. So thanks for being here today.